So you want to get more raw materials like plasteel and other rare metals like uranium and gold in RimWorld. But you can't seem to find any in that mountain or hill base you set yourself up in while you were still picking a place at the time to settle. At this point, I'm assuming you basically removed any and all hilltops in sight and hollowed out basically every single cavern and mountainside or node near your settlement like a crackhead dwarf sent on a mining mission while on a wake-up induced acid trip. And while searching for these resources, you had no luck whatsoever in regards to finding any of the following resources on your map, and all you have now is a potential festering insect infestation breeding ground ready to grow and spread outside your colony's doorstep, and a dream and deep desire to acquire plasteel to forward your tribal subjugation goals. You might be asking, why not just buy it? Well, you're broke as shit after buying the components to repair and keep the gadgets in your base up and running, and you can't buy the goods from any other faction trader until you find something to barter with an equivalent value. Or they just flat out don't like you and are adamantly hostile to you based on the previous atrocities you have committed against them. As it turns out, capturing and imprisoning a leader of a faction and having him fight in the arena fight pits for four straight years is a surefire way to get a faction to hate you and become their natural enemy. Whatever the reason may be, you're still screwed out of the resources needed to progress your colony's interests on the rim. Well, my fellow war criminals, today I'm going to share with you a very simple guide to resolve your inherent need and demand for rare Wimworld metals like plasteel and gold to the point at which you'll have enough to suit your colony's needs and maybe, just maybe through hard work and tribal genocide, become the largest rare metal mining tycoon on the rim. So at this point in the game, I'm assuming you're already a middling size and tech level colony trying to make a living amongst the other barbaric factions put onto the rim. You've probably already seen or researched the numerous mining lines of tech options of research in a tech tree already, which if you haven't, research them until you finally gain the knowledge and wisdom granted by the RimWorld machine gods to build and operate the long range mineral scanner. While the rest of these researchables are useful in their own right to your colony if you need basic materials like steel at the very least, it does not satiate the need and demand your colony of psychopaths will have for gold and plasteel or otherwise in the later stages of the game, as you will eventually exhaust all the natural metal resources and deposits on your settlement map. Gold late games used to make advanced components as a side material to engrave and decorate prestige level power armors in a royalty DLC, and also serve as a currency that can be traded for honor points to increase your colonist monarchy standing among the empire. Plasteel on the other hand in comparison to gold is also another important resource a colony needs, serving as the main material used to forge charge weapons and power armor, as well as serving as the raw material needed in the creation of advanced components alongside gold. Whatever it may be, the long range mineral scanner in my opinion is a must have for a colony that finds itself lacking in these specific resources and have a strong desire to have an abundance of it. Yeah, it's a long way throughout the research tree in terms of tech level, and your mentally challenged colonists dedicated to research will have a fun time being glued to the tables 24-7 whenever they're awake, but it is one of the best ways to source these materials in very, very large quantities with a little bit of allocated time throughout the day scanning. Now the device itself is pretty power hungry coming in at 700 watts and is also a little bit on the expensive side to construct, costing a total of 200 steel, 6 components, and 2 advanced components to build. But the payoff will be worth it if you ever find yourself in a need of a very specific type of metal or component resource in the future. While the stealing components may be readily available on your map and colony, the advanced components is one of the more harder to acquire items needed to build this structure. You will most likely end up having to trade for it from the other traveling traders or faction bases spread out across the rim. So save up for those components when you can because you'll never expect it when the opportunity arises when a friendly faction comes by touting and showing off exotic goods on your doorstep. Because when these traders pop up with the resources, you'll be wishing you hadn't spent that last batch of silver in the most non-economical way possible, such as hospital flooring. I was forced to trade and make some very hard decisions that day when bartering my resources. The extra winter rations, yeah they were a small price to pay for those components, but I guess my colony is going to be eating Elmer's glue this season. Or if you're into masochism and limb loss, you could always hope for a mech cluster or mech ship to fall out from the sky to attack and dismantle for the advanced components as well. Good luck with that. 
Once built, the long range scanner will solidify its place as a long term investment in your little colony of psychopaths and human leather wearing citizens. Upon clicking this beautiful piece of machinery, it will ask you what type of resource to scan for. Select the type of metal your colony needs and that's about it. Now you wait. Throughout this time, your colony's egg-headed Point Dexters assigned to research for work will now begin slaving away and molesting the device like a tech priest worshipping a holy relic of an ancient age for the next few days. Regardless of the heat-stroking hot temperatures or hypothermic frostbite-inducing cold depending on your colony's location, your tech-preaching colonists will continue scanning for the selected resource until they find a lump of it on a specific tile of the map just a short distance away. It should be noted that it can get a little tedious sometimes to get your ape brain colonists to use the machine, as they may all of a sudden stop and do other tasks that they're assigned to be doing on their list of priorities. You can fix this and force them to focus strictly on scanning by ticking the research priority to the highest possible value being 1 and deselecting and deprioritizing everything else on the work tabs until the scanning process finishes. This is also implying that said research colonist doesn't go catatonic over the trauma of eating Elmer's glue from the nutrient paste dispenser for the entire winter, or gets slapped into a pain coma when Randy sends drop pods full of mechanoids to come by and trash a colony. Once the great lump has been found through the hard work of your exhausted tech preachers, start making preparations to set out and collect it. Because if you don't, someone else will beat you to it first and you lose the opportunity to get the metal your colonist has been slaving away for the past half season scanning for. It's not an immediate rush however, as you'll have a maximum of 30 days to get to it and mine out the entire chunk. When you do decide to caravan out, however, be sure to bring colonists to have some skills if not some semblance of competency when it comes to mining, as well as enough food to last you throughout the entire time you'll be camping there mining out the entire chunk. Because compared to these small paltry deposits of plasteel and gold you normally find in your mountains and hill bases, it is a very significantly sized chunk of ore. If the colonists you bring are able to shoot and fight to some degree, even better, because RNGs is over here might see fit to ambush your colonists along the journey to the lump, or leave a small party of raiders or worse, mechanoids at the site. However, it should be noted that there's only a 40% chance of the site being guarded, so on that chance, be prepared for an encounter. The other 60% is more of a coin toss odd in your favor on the entire place being hostile free. Other than that, however, it should be also noted that it is not a large hostile group like you would find in a raider faction base. So you should be able to overtake them surprisingly easy so long as you have the skills and basic equipment to do so. If not, then you have bigger problems on your hands. Once you complete the journey and finally enter the zone tile and handle any of the local dissidents at the dig site, if there are any, is when you finally see it. A single giant lump of plasteel or any other rare resource depending on what you chose to scan for, in all of its shiny glory. Give a short prayer and praise to the Rimworld story gods for giving you such a gift, and set the entire node and lump to be mine and watch closely as the miners you brought over get to work like a crackhead being told that there's a dime bag of flake or yayo buried somewhere between those plasteel nodes. While your colonists slave away at mining the lump searching for the alleged flake deposit, set up a stockpile zone for the mine goods and set up a temporary shelter to camp and eat at while the miners continue to work. Because depending on the miners skill and the amount of pawns and slaves you brought with you to task with mining, you might be there for quite a while. Set up your sleeping bags and prepare to hunker down for the next few days, 10 being the maximum duration that you can stay at the site, until you have extracted all of the metal and raw material from the site. Once finished, reform your caravan on the world map and begin making preparations to travel back to your settlement. Take everything and all the plasteel and resources that you can carry like the loot goblin you are, and prepare to begin your slave driving journey of hauling your spoils back home. Hopefully you brought rideable pack animals for this, because anything otherwise, your boys will have to resolve themselves to using duffel bags and brute cavemen strength and their bare hands to carry all of the goods back home. Once you make it back to your settlement, that's it. You're set. Your colonists will begin bringing and offloading your goods to their respective stockpiles, and you can now begin the arduous task of beginning and waiting for that crafty of yours to finish crafting that first set of power armor. Power armor that I know you will be using the second it's completed to raid and burn down tribal sediments to flex your technological superiority in an egotistical genocidal war crime joy trip. After everything's unloaded and your colonists begin to settle back and continue to go about their daily life, all the while praying to the Rimworld gods each day to not send an infestation to that hollowed out section of your mountain base, you can even begin scanning for another resource lump if you so desire to. 
Whether it would be components, gold, steel, or otherwise, whatever it may be, the option will always remain there so long as the device is in your colony. If not, then just disable the power on the device if you aren't using it to conserve power, and give leeway on your power grid to power the base defenses in the event those tribals decide to raid you in retaliation for your acts of genocide. And that wraps up the video, this is Comrade, and I hope this information helps you on your first, if not many, playthroughs in the game as you go about your genocidal journey as a RimWorld Warlord. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like before you go to better the RNG chances from the RimWorld gods to not send a toxic fallout your way. This guy was one of the unlucky ones. Alright, might have actually turned a corner here. That would be awesome. That would be different. Something bad's about to happen. I can feel it.